Hello, I'm Tim Page, and I'm talking to the guitarist Matthias Schulstad on this beautiful day in Stockholm. We're going to go through his album, The Guitar Player. We'll talk about it generally at first, and then we'll go through each and every cut, and I think you'll enjoy it. What interested me is that the guitar player seems to be, on one level, sort of an introduction to a guitar, taking us through its repertory, but it's also a very autobiographical album. And I wonder if you'd have some thoughts about that before we go through it piece by piece. Thank you, Tim. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. And thank you for coming. It's an honor to speak with you. And for me too. I thought this could be a way to fuse the two traditions that I'm in all the time, the guitar world and then Sweden, where I'm from. And it's very interesting because it's kind of the world of the guitar from back in the days of Bach right through now. What was it that drew you into the world of the guitar? What was it that got you interested in this? And tell me a little bit about that discovery. I was six, seven years old at school and my friend played the guitar and I would you know, hang out at his house and play his guitar. So it was just coincidence. I mean, and I think that's how, how it happens for, for so many people. Yeah, yeah. And, but then the question is like, what's the bug? What catches the attention in a bigger way and I think it was hearing my first teacher play the uh, study in B minor by Fernando Sur. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, the Opus 35, number 22. Hearing that, I heard the polyphony, the melody and the bass and the middle voices and the complete picture that was created from, from different parts and how it all added up in a fantastic and wondrous way. And when I heard him play that the first time, I didn't even dare to ask what it was. I just hoped he would play it another time sometime. Yeah, yeah. And then the second time he played it, I asked, what was that? And then he said, oh, it was to study in B minor by Fernando Sur. And I said, oh, okay. And did that become a sort of a, 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 a an ambition of yours to play that particular piece? Or did you just get fascinated by the whole world? At that time, I was just fascinated by the whole world. And eventually I played the piece and also many others by Soar, but that one stuck with me later on, I suppose. Yeah. You, you know, it's so interesting that you mentioned that because I think there's one moment when you discover music and you discover how amazing it is. But at least for me, there was another moment where I discovered counterpoint. And, you know, this was in singing and rounds. And there was an old commercial that was all about jazzy counterpoint. And it was a minute long. And I used to just be so thrilled whenever it came on TV. And it's really wonderful when you're a child and you hear that, well, this is happening. But then you all of a sudden realize that a whole lot of other stuff is happening, too. And it's exhilarating. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. So now I wonder if you'd like to tell us a little bit more about what you've done before um, making this very ambitious recording. A lot of my activities have been involved in, in, in trying to, to find in my playing this vocal quality where the sound of the guitar is similar to the voice in a kind of organic way. And I think in that sense, the guitar is so close to the human voice because mm -hmm. we, we produce the sound in such an intimate way with, with our bodies. And that has really been my exploratory path. Yeah. Are you interested in jazz yes. and pop guitar, rock? Yes. Um, yes. Yes. How interesting. Yes. You know, when I was learning, there was a sense that you almost had to apologize for loving rock or pop music, a little less for jazz. But yeah. Um, yeah. it was very strange. It was a very different world. And I mean, you know, I'm, I'm so interested in all different kinds of music. And I guess it's not a a big problem with a younger generation. Underneath, fundamentally, musically, music is music. And I think that's what's being revealed today in the streaming economy, when basically all music competes according to the same criteria. Yeah, that's whether, true. Whether or not people listen. Yeah, that's really true. I cannot tell you the kind of tut-tutting that went on 50 years ago when, when I was coming of age musically. Well, now that we've talked about the idea behind your recording, let's go through it track by track. <laughs> 